technical difficulties. Good afternoon, everyone. Due to some technical difficulties, uh, we'll be starting at quarter past one. If you came in later, uh, welcome. I'm Chico Taguba, the host. Um, due to uh, some technical difficulties, we'll be starting at quarter past one. In the meantime, please keep your microphone muted. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chico Taguba. I'm your host for this evening. Due to some technical difficulties, we'll be starting our book launch at quarter past one. In the meantime, please mute your microphone and we'll start in four minutes. Thank you. Okay, if you just joined us, welcome. Uh, due to some technical difficulties, we'll be starting at quarter past one. In the meantime, please mute your microphone and we'll start in three minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chico Tuguba. I'm your host for this afternoon. Due to some technical difficulties, we'll be starting at quarter past one. In the meantime, please mute your microphone and we will start in two minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a quarter past one, and we are starting with our um, book launching event. Good afternoon. I'm Chico Tuguba. I'm your host for this afternoon. Some friendly reminders, please mute your microphones, um, and there will be no uh, live stream for this event.
Okay, greetings and warm welcome. I know that many of you are always tuned in whenever we launch a book of Professor Jose Maria Sison. Today, we are launching two volumes of his writings entitled On the Communist Party of the Philippines, book five of the Sison Reader Series, covering the years 1968-1999-2022. An old man once told me that for him, the meaning of communism is simple. It is the absence of exploitation of man by another. He also said that under communism, no one becomes richer than anyone else, and there are no class of the wealthy and no class of the poor. He was a wise old man, and he did his part in the first steps to reach that goal. Another description I was told is that in a purely communist system, no one owns property individually. For example, people may work at a factory, but ownership of the factory or the machinery inside it is collective and equal. The things made at the factory are shared by everyone or given to the people most in need of them. It is a long road to freedom from exploitation and oppression. Is it doable? Those who take the long road to freedom say it is, and they put their words into action. We see workers and peasants fighting class wars. We see young people carrying the torch of struggle. But as being shown by the experience of the Filipino people, whose revolution has sustained enemy attacks and built monuments of triumphs, such an undertaking by a people needs a communist party that will lead them in attaining socialism, then on forward to communism.
my wife Nasa namin Ay gintong sumilay Anong tamis pala Ang sa lupa mamuhay Kung sa pagpapakasakit Ay may tagumpay Pag-asa kang tunay Partido Komunista Na sa amin Ay magpapalaya Anong tamis pala Ang salupa mamuhay Kung sa pagpapakasakit Mabuhay ang Partido Komunista ng Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang bagong hukbong bayan. Mabuhay ang sambayan ng Pilipino. That was a beautiful rendition, Madikit. Thank you for singing despite, that, despite your colds. For non-Filipino speakers, Madikit just sang a song for us. It was an ode to the Communist Party of the Philippines entitled Ang Gabay or The Guide. For the poor and oppressed classes in the country, the CPP serves as their guiding light towards genuine freedom. Likened to a seed, growing and blooming among the masses, lifting the veil of darkness, it ultimately leads them to their liberation. Thank you, Mariket, again, for providing us with a fitting introduction to the books we are so pleased to launch today. Our first reviewer is an interesting personality. He is known as the man who turned his back on his class origin, the landlord class, and stood as one with the peasants and workers. He has been serving the Filipino people well, and if the simple definition of communism is upholding and fighting for the interests of the people, then one could say he is one. I'm very pleased to present no other than Louis Halandoni, Chief International Representative and member of the National Executive Council of the National Democratic Front of the Philippines. Let us hear his thoughts on book five of the season reader series on the CPP 1968 to 1999. Thank you, Chito. Dear comrades and friends, today we launched the first and second volume of the book on the Communist Party of the Philippines, Season Reader Series 5 and 6, written by Comrade Jose Maria Siso. I am greatly honored to have been asked to review the first volume, a book of more than 500 pages covering 1968 to 1999. This book contains many documents of the CPP written by Jose Maria Sison when he was chairman of the CPP. The book truly celebrates the great victories of the revolutionary movement in the Philippines under the leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines. From its founding on December 26, 1968, it has continuously been under the firm guidance of Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism. The founders of the re-established Communist Party of the Philippines have been led from the very beginning by Comrade Jose Maria Sison. Marked by revolutionary creativity, daring and remarkable resourcefulness and courage, the 12 founders dared to found the party and start the People's War with only nine automatic rifles and 26 inferior arms, but with the support of thousands of youth, worker, and peasant fighters. Comrade Joma's illuminating preface to this book teaches us revolutionary lessons learned in the course of conducting people's war. It is the inspiration for all comrades and friends in the ongoing struggle of the Filipino people 
for national and social liberation. I will comment on some salient documents of the party written during the early years of struggle, which have given guidance to the entire party membership. Rectify errors and rebuild the party. In this document, the CPP ensures that the major errors of the LAVAS are exposed and repudiated in detail in order to root them out and make sure they will effectively be counteracted by the revolutionary forces. The major errors of the LAVA leadership are taken up in detail so that the succession of LAVA leaderships is thoroughly presented, exposed, and repudiated so that the revolutionary movement is forever rid of their disastrous errors. The Constitution of the Communist Party of the Philippines dated December 26, 1968, proclaims that the CPP is firmly guided by Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. This is firmly repeated on October 15, 1969 and January 15, 1970. In its summing up after three years, the party draws valuable lessons from its three-year practice. Responding to the enthusiasm of peasant organizations, the party built numerous guerrilla units without giving sufficient attention to consolidation. The result of lack of attention to consolidation was the collapse of most guerrilla units when the enemy counterattacked. The party made the needed correction. For every five units of expansion, there must be one or two for consolidation. Subsequently, in July 1930, 1976, the party issued our urgent tasks. The CPP laid out concrete steps of organizing the rural areas. Detailed steps are provided for a step-by-step -step organizing from the initial group of the Barrio Liaison Group. This includes the functions of the Barrio Liaison Groups, measures undertaken to ensure that no unreliable elements are able to enter a revolutionary structure. Undertaking deeper social investigation and undertaking study meetings. This result in the setting up of the people's organizing groups. From the setting up of people's organizing groups in the wide countryside, the masses in the broad countryside are organized. This results in building the people's power on a solid basis. Specific characteristics of our people's war. This 1972 document declares that the Philippines is composed of big islands like Mindanao, 104,000 square kilometers and 94,000 group in the Visayas. This Square and smaller islands grouped in the Visayas. And this document states that the 11 biggest islands comprise 94% of the entire territory and the entire population. The party concludes that the party should develop the bigger islands first and later the lesser islands. By making this scientific study of the reality of the archipelagic character of the country, we can set forth the strategy and tactics of the revolution in our country and not be misled by the 7,000 islands as an impossible obstacle in carrying out the revolution. 
the CPP and PA in Mindanao growing from weak to strong, from small to big. This document published in Ang Bayan on April 15, 1977, tells about the development and gains of the party and the NPA in Mindanao. It gives detailed news of the development of the fighting fronts and the NPA opening new guerrilla fronts. Stand for Socialism Against Modern Revisionism of January 15, 1992. At a time when the doubts on the possibility of waging revolution were spreading worldwide, especially because of Soviet revisionism, this document, Stand for Socialism Against Modern Revisionism, was a powerful inspiration the CPP presented the firm basis for the Philippine revolutionary movement to consolidate and advance. Other revolutionary movements drew inspiration from it and requested translations. Thus, it was translated into other languages. The next document carried the rectification movement through to the end and advance the revolutionary cause in an all round way. Some elements in the party suffered the error of strategic counter offensive during the stage of strategic defensive. They developed and implemented the premature setting up of NPA companies to the detriment of support units in Mindanao. After a few initial victories, these party elements caused big defeats. Under conditions of defeat, the erroneous party elements blamed the so-called deep penetration agents, DPAs. They failed to analyze the cause of their defeats. These errors resulted in significant losses among the organized masses in certain regions in Mindanao and other areas. Party members and cadres in various regions, numbering about 90 areas, demanded a deep analysis and necessary corrections. The party leaders came up with the document, reaffirm our basic principles and rectify errors which was firmly supported by more than 90% of the entire party membership. On the 26th anniversary of the party on December 26, 1994, the CPP issued the statement, carry the rectification movement through to the end and advance the revolu revolutionary cause in all round way. Carrying out the firm principles and measures of rectification put forward by the party leadership, the losses were corrected thoroughly and the areas that were lost were recovered. By 1996, the party leadership was able to declare the closure of the rectification movement of the party. Hence, on December 26, 1996, on the 28th anniversary of the CBP, the party declared years of revolutionary struggle, strive all out to fulfill the tasks set for 1996. From the history of the Communist Party of the Philippines, it is very clear that the effective leadership and continuous guidance of a vanguard communist party is necessary to withstand the enemy onslaught and attacks and state terror. The next volume of the book on the CPP will present the Philippine revolutionary movement led by the Communist Party of the Philippines in the years 
from the new millennium up to the present. I wish you all, comrades and friends, a very fruitful study and discussion in reading and studying this book. May we all learn valuable revolutionary lessons, lessons to strengthen us and all who will pursue the Philippine revolution to victory. Mabuhay ang Partido Komunista ng Pilipinas, mabuhay ang bagong hukbong bayan, mabuhay ang pambansang demokratikong frente. Long live the Filipino people, long live the revolutionaries throughout the world. Thank you, Louis. Indeed, for such a great undertaking to change the world, a people's movement must need a vanguard party to lead and guide it. Since communism is a very controversial term, we asked a few people, especially the young people, on what comes to their minds when they hear the word communism. Do you want to hear what they think? We got a few videos for you. Nung umpisa, ang tingin ko sa komunismo ay masama dahil ito ang tinuro ng paaralan, ng simbahan, ng lipunan sa pangkalahatan. Subalit habang tumatagal, dahil patuloy nating nakikita ang kapihan sa lipunan, napatunayan at nakita ko na ang komunismo at ang mga komunista ay siyang nagbibigay boses ng kapangyarihan sa mga taong pinagkaitan ng boses ng kapangyarihan sa mga lipunan. Kaya, para sa akin, ang komunismo ang sa magsisilbing pag-asa para sa hinaharap ng sambayanan at ng mga mamamayan sa sandaigdigan na patuloy na inaapi ng sistemang unti-unti nang nabubulok. Sa una, wala akong alam kung ano ba talaga ang komunismo. Hanggang sa mga pag-aaral ay maraming mga kabataan na nagpapaliwanag at nagpapaintindi kung ano pa talaga ang komunismo. At doon ako natuto at namulat sa kalagayan ng mamamayang Pilipino at buong pusong niyakap kung uh, ang komunismo. Dati yung komunismo sa akin ay isang masama dahil sa pagmulat at pagturo sa akin sa paaralan na minulat nila sa akin na ang komunismo ay mamamatay tao isang masama sa lipunan subalit habang ako'y lumalaki nakikihalubilo ako sa iba't ibang tao at doon ko unti-unting nalaman na ang komunismo pala ay hindi wagas na, na masama subalit ito'y nakakatulong sa, sa lipunan Well, before I grew up in a very anti-communist family, so I didn't know why, but I learned that it was a terrible system that didn't work, only worked in theory or on paper, is what my father always said and that capitalism is true freedom, true democracy, and that living in a capitalist society like Australia, uh, we are very lucky. But now, obviously, he was wrong. And I think he didn't quite understand what he was talking about when he said communism was bad because everything he said was really just propaganda and I heard the exact same things he said repeatedly in TV shows, movies, uh, even books but after studying, being exposed to a lot of 
realities after leaving home and educating myself and being educated uh, I realized that communism is a fantastic word it's helped me grow helped my community grow I feel a lot better about living I feel like I have purpose um yeah it just makes my life a lot better Ding. we'll be showing more of those videos during the program abangan you just wait for it okay our next reviewer is one very knowledgeable with the topic of communism for she was born and raised in a country that first showed us what it was this world the U or USSR a world which is a prelude to communism she is the author of the book Sovietica her account of growing up in the Soviet Union and the witness on the breakup of the USSR and the collapse of socialism we call on Irina Malenko to give us her review of the sixth book of the season reader series on the CPP 2000 to As you can hear, you're perhaps not hearing anything. Uh, this is still part of the technical difficulties we're trying to uh, overcome. Okay, so we're having a uh, uh, troubles uh, showing you the uh, video review of Irina Melenko. She's not live with us today. Um, she pre recorded her uh, review. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll be uh, able to uh, show you that later. In the meantime, um, perhaps we got another set of videos of uh especially young people on what comes to their mind when they hear the word communism oh wait a minute i just heard that the video of uh, irina malenko's review is ready so we will try again ladies and gentlemen and everyone else irina malenko's review Joma's books and with every his new book just like his other readers I revised my own theoretical knowledge of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. I learned how to apply this knowledge to the concrete practice of the current specific circumstances of the worldwide crisis of the capitalist system. I also learned so many new facts of the history of the communist movement in the Philippines which wasn't really properly covered in the Soviet literature available to us in the past. I must say it truly amazes me how productively Kajoma works even throughout the pandemic when many comrades unwillingly perhaps uh, felt depressed or demoralized by the harsh circumstances, lack of face-to-face -face contacts with comrades and possibility to travel, as well as very harsh restrictions in many countries, Netherlands and Philippines included. Uh, I must say he is really a shining example for all of us how not to give in to those dark feelings and to turn adversities into opportunities. As our uh, Korean comrades say, even though our path is arduous, 
we will walk it smiling. Thank you, Kajoma, for your inspiring example, which is of great support to all of us all around the world. Uh, the foreword to this book was of great importance for me as a foreign reader, as it gives us the needed historical context, which is surely known to most Filipino comrades, but many aspects of it were not known to me uh, previously. Historical events and the struggle for socialism in the Philippines, uh, they were rarely covered in the Soviet television or radio. The biggest chance of seeing anything about the Philippines was in our weekly 45 minutes long program, International Panorama, which was shown in Soviet TV on Sundays. It was about the events of this week around the world. But even there, the only thing I clearly remember which was shown to us about the Philippines was the ousting of dictator Marcos in 1986. It was great to bring back those memories when I was in USSR watching this program. When I read uh, the article, Role of the Communist Party on the Philippines in the Downfall of the Marcos Dictatorship, uh, this article is dated in 2009 and is published in this book. I had actually no idea back in 1986 that many years later I will be able to get to know Filipino comrades personally, including the heroic leader who was in prison when I was just 10 years old. So the foreword is setting the tone to the whole book. The uh, book then continues in chronological order, covering the first two decennia of the 21st century in the history of the Communist Party of the Philippines. However, this book also contains several excursions into a more distant past. These are articles, Impact of the Communist International on the Founding and Development of the Communist Party of the Philippines, written in 2006, and another, more recent one, The Role of the Communist International in the Formation of the Communist Party of the Philippine Islands, 1930, written in March 2019, which I personally had the honor to translate into Russian and which was published in an international communist theoretical magazine called Marxism and Temporary Times, which was edited by our late comrade Tamil Yabrova from the Ukraine. Reading these articles helped me to appreciate even more the spirit of proletarian internationalism and international solidarity, which is growing in importance immensely under the current conditions of our mutual struggle. There are several continuing themes in this book. It's the historical events in the Philippines and how the Communist Party prepared for those events, took, events, took part in them, and shaped the history of your country with your ongoing and heroic struggle. There are also annual messages for the anniversary of the party's foundation, which summarize the achievements for each period and draws the aims and the strategy for the future. There are also articles that concentrate on purely militarily and strategical and tactical aspects of the protracted People's War. I'm sure they will be of great interest to the anti-imperialist and Marxist liberation movements worldwide. There are also articles dedicated to the teaching of Comrade Mao, such as the most fascinating and deeply analytical article called Development, Current Status and Prospect of Maoist Theory and Practice in the Philippines, written in 2012, which is a great example of how to successfully apply the Maoist theory to concrete conditions of one country, as well as the article on Mao Zedong Thought or Maoism, written in 2019. There are also articles in the book clarifying the tasks of the Filipino and international communist movement right now and in the years to come, such as on the future of the communist movement, written in 2019, and how to start changing the world, also written in 2019. Of great importance to all our brotherly communist parties are Kajoma's thoughts on how to successfully combat opportunism without, within our own ranks and Trotsky, Trotskyism outside the ranks, but still polluting the international communist movement, uh, such as the article Trotskyist attacked on the CPP and the Philippine Revolution written in 2020. And of course, most valuable for all of us is his analysis of the current situation in the world and of our immediate tasks under these harsh conditions, which are so greatly manifested in the several articles uh, from 2020 and 2021. It's, for example, concerning the Communist Party of the Philippines, the Philippine Revolution and the International Situation, which was written in October 2020, and also the Revolutionary Movement of the Philippines Today, it's dated uh, in September 2021. 
First of all, it was great to hear words of support for such socialist countries as DPRK, which is being tremendously vilified by the Western imperialist media. And I can quote here from Kajomi's book. I admire the anti-imperialist forces and peoples of Cuba, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and in other countries for standing up against U.S. imperialism and waging struggles against it and its lackeys. They just struggles serve to support the Philippine Revolution. In turn, the Philippine Revolution supports their own struggles. Good if the U.S. gets tied down in its own home ground and in many other countries so that it has less force to focus on the Philippines. It's also good if any revolutionary force in another country can extend moral support and concrete assistance to help the Philippine people in their revolutionary struggle. But it is best that the Filipino people rely on themselves and not to become dependent on foreign assistance even when it materializes. <coughs> this actually echoes Karin's revolution own spirit of self-reliance and independence, as you surely know. Uh, the article on the CPP and the People's Democratic Revolution, which is as recent as December 2021, not only summarizes party's achievements on its arduous path towards the bright future for the peoples of the Philippines, but it also shows in grave details the gravity of crimes of the Duterte regime, as well as touches upon the issue of the upcoming presidential elections in the Philippines, and stresses that the People's Democratic Government is already being built in the countryside and is expanding wave upon wave in connection with the encirclement of the cities from the countryside in the protracted People's War. It would be left opportunism for the NPA to try to seize political power in Manila before it has gained enough strength to, to do so with certain success by inflicting strategic defeats at the, on the enemy mainly in the countryside. The forces of the armed revolution, especially the NPA, have preserved themselves and gained strength by avoiding decisive battles that they cannot yet win. The NPA is operating in 74 provinces out of 81 Philippine provinces and in more than 110 guerrilla fronts straddling districts and provinces. Kajoma also stresses that the Philippine revolution is now one of the leading armed revolutions in the world within the framework of the global anti-imperialist and democratic struggles, and he describes it as the torchbearer in the direction of socialism and the world proletarian revolution. Under current conditions where all major contradictions in the world capital system are intensifying, it is of great importance for all communists in different parts of the world to learn the lessons from his book and from the heroic struggle of the Filipino people. I expect that this book will be widely read and thoroughly studied across the continents. Uh, may I also use this opportunity to congratulate Ka Joma with his upcoming birthday and to wish him great health, new successes in our mutual struggles for socialism and many more new brilliant books such as this one. There are also urgent tasks opening for us in the ongoing worldwide capitalist crisis. We as communists have great opportunities for bringing many more members under our banners as well as great responsibilities during this time. Lenin defined the necessary subjective condition for a socialist revolution along with the three objective conditions. The subjective condition that turns a revolutionary situation into a revolution is the ability of the revolutionary classes to take mass action strong enough to break the old government. According to Lenin, the existence of workers' party aimed, armed with revolutionary theory which would lead the masses and bring the revolution to a victorious end is the subjective prerequisite. Thus, as we see that the objective conditions for a successful revolution are building up right in front of us, the success of this revolution actually hugely depends on the Communist Party work with the masses. And this book, written by Kajoma, is arming us with the knowledge which is necessary for successfully completion of our historical task. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Irina. Even though you're not live with us today, your review is very insightful and inspiring. We have another set of videos for you again, people. This it always reminds me of my dad because 
I know he wants to fight for the right of his own country, which is in Philippines, especially for the farmers. And every, every week, usually, he has meetings with other people to help the farmers in the Philippines to do what's right and go against the government for their own beliefs as well. And I know that um, what he does is right because it's for the good for other people as well. When I think of communism, I think of the billions and billions of oppressed people throughout history who uh, worked their entire lives uh, for somebody else and who never got to taste the fruit of their labor um, because of all these different systems of oppression and of exploitation, um, especially what we're living right under right now, which is capitalism. So, so when I think of communism, I think of the oppressed masses, the exploited masses of the world um, rising up and saying that we are going to take the fruits of our own labor, we are going to build our own society, and we're not going to be exploited anymore, we're not going to be oppressed anymore, and the people who have been oppressing us have to give us back um, everything that they've stolen. So that's what comes to my mind when I think of communism. What comes in my head when the word communism comes up? Um, I view myself as fortunate to have been born into, into the movement. Um, I think the longing for communism is um, justified and necessary. Um, I've, I've witnessed firsthand how brutal um, the government is and the lengths they're willing to go to just to keep their grasp on, on money and power. So every human deserves to have their basic needs for survival met. I think that communists are revolutionaries. Communists have changed the world and will always be at the forefront of changing it because they understand deeply the material conditions of our society. They know that the only way to free the people from oppression is to change society at its root, the economic mode of production. They know that the only way to free the people is to be one with them. I'm happy to know that the CPP is continuing and advancing the struggle to win freedom for the Filipino people. Nice. Those were very interesting uh, and very inspiring words from the youth. May we now call on the author, Professor Shison, to say a few words of wisdom. After all, he is a wise old man. Well, okay. Not very old, perhaps, but very wise. Professor Shison. Distinguished guests and friends, I'm delighted that the Season Reader Series has published in two volumes the most important documents of the Communist Party of the Philippines since its founding Congress on December 26, 1968. I thank the International Network for Philippine Studies for accomplishing this, the NDFP International Information Office for organizing this book launch, the book reviewers and all other participants. The CPP was re-established in 1968 as a result of the desire of the Filipino people for revolutionary change of the chronically crisis-stricken semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system and also as a result of the struggle against revisionism in the old Communist Party and in the now collapsed Soviet Union. Since then, the CPP has served as the advanced detachment of the proletariat and has brilliantly and successfully led the Philippine Revolution under the guidance of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. The CPP has applied the universal theory of the proletariat on the history and concrete conditions of the Philippines defined the character of Philippine society and set forth the general line of people's democratic revolution with a socialist perspective. It has integrated the protracted people's war with the agrarian revolution and the nationally united front. It has adopted democratic centralism as its organizational principle. The CP started from scratch with only with a few scores of cadres 
from the mass organizations of workers, peasants and youth amounting to some 50,000. Three months thereafter, on March 29, 1969, we were able to establish the New People's Army after we united with the proletarian revolutionaries in the Old People's Army after they broke away from the Taruk Sumulong gangster clique. We started with only nine automatic rifles and 26 inferior firearms and with a peasant mass base of 80,000 in the second district of Tarlak in early 1969. Now the CPP has more than 150,000 members. The New People's Army has thousands of red fighters with automatic rifles and operates in more than 110 guerrilla fronts nationwide. It is augmented by tens of thousands of members of the People's Militia and Self-Defense Units of the revolutionary mass organizations. Within the frame of the NDFP, the revolutionary mass organizations and local alliances have millions of members. The local organs of political power, which constitute the People's Democratic Government, encompass both the organized and unorganized masses in more than 90% of the Philippine provinces. The enemy, the renegades, and other detractors of the revolution say that 53 years of revolutionary struggle have passed and yet the presidential palace in Manila is still held by the reactionaries. But the People's Democratic Government is built widely in the countryside and aims to advance wave by wave towards the urban areas. The great victories of the CPP have been achieved self-reliantly through the revolutionary dedication, hard work, sacrifices, and fierce struggles by the cadres and members of the CPP, the Red Commanders and Fighters, and the broad masses of the people in an archipelagic country without the benefit of cross-border advantages and with the revisionist betrayal of socialism at first restoring capitalism in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe and then defeating the great proletarian cultural revolution and restoring capitalism in China. Out of fear that the CPP and the NPA would rapidly become far stronger than it was, the U.S. decided to junk its puppet Marcos after he ordered the killing of his political rival Benigno Aquino in 1983. The legal, patriotic, and democratic forces and anti-Marcos conservative forces coalesced to fight the fascist regime. It was in 1984 that the U.S. Uh, recognized the growing strength of the revolutionary movement and decided to junk Marcos. In 1986, President Corazon Aquino negotiated a ceasefire agreement with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, but broke this agreement with the Mendiola massacre in January 1987. In 1992, the Ramos regime sought to engage the revolutionary movement in peace negotiations with the NDFP. More than 10 major agreements were made, but every post-Marcos regime has tried to use the peace negotiations as a mere device for surveillance and intelligence, sowing political intrigue and seeking the capitulation of the revolutionary forces. The worst of the post-Marcos regime is that of Duterte, who has terminated the peace negotiations and scrapped all the agreements so far made and has vowed to destroy the armed revolution before the end of his term in 2022. He will surely fail because his grave crimes of treason, state terrorism, plunder, and misuse of public resources and the persistence of foreign monopoly capitalism domestic feudalism and bureaucrat capitalism and the rapid worsening of the crisis of the Philippine ruling system and the world capitalist system provide the favorable conditions for the continuing rise of the armed revolution. The Filipino people and the revolutionary forces can be expected to fight more fiercely than ever before against the Duterte terror regime and the entire ruling system when Duterte rigs the elections this year, as Marcos did in 1986. 
They are now far stronger and more tested and struggle than in earlier decades. They are more than ever prepared to wage a resolute and relentless struggle because the chronic crisis of the ruling system is rapidly worsening. They are more desirous than ever for revolutionary change and the CPP and other revolutionary forces are stronger than ever before. It is to the outstanding great credit of the CPP that it is one of the proletarian revolutionary parties of the world successfully leading the People's Democratic Revolution. It is widely recognized as a torchbearer of the world proletarian socialist revolution, whose resurgence is being ushered in by the anti-imperialist and democratic mass struggles all over the world and by the intensification of all major contradictions between labor and capital, between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations, among the imperialist powers themselves and the U.S. and China as the chief imperialist rivals. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shizun, for uh, your words of wisdom. Uh, we are now open for the question and answer portion. Uh, so you as participants can uh, post questions, but there's a small disclaimer. Due to technical difficulties, Professor Shison will not join us live. Oh, you thought that that video that you just saw was live? No, but it's not, it was pre-recorded. So if you got questions uh, for Professor Shison, please write it in the chat or email it and your question will be answered. Irina is not live with us as well. So please pose questions to Louis Halandoni only. And you can post the questions via the chat only. So please do not use your microphone. No kilometric questions, please. Meaning keep your questions short so that we can accommodate more questions. Um, uh, hello, uh, Louis. There was yes. already a question. There was already a question that came in, um, and I'll just read it. How do the people in the Philippines, majority of them Catholic, look at communism? What made you side with the communist, being a former priest? Well, uh, <clears throat> most of the people in the Philippines are also suffering the. Uh, violations of human rights, those of the peasantry, the workers, the indigenous people. So they are rising up more and more to fight for their rights. Now the question of communism has not become that strong and important because their point now is to fight for their rights, to go against the violations of human rights and one thing actually to defeat the Duterte regime in the coming elections and to make sure that the people who are most affected by the violations of rights by Duterte and his consorts would be corrected. So it is less a question of whether it's communism or whether the Catholics are against this. The point is that the struggling, fighting Filipino people, the peasants, the workers, the indigenous people, the women and the youth all over the country fight for justice, fight for human rights, for a just and lasting peace. So these are the more important and major questions that are occupying their mind. I was a Catholic priest and I got involved in the fight for justice of the peasants and the workers in Negros. And in the process, I got to admire the fighting courage of these oppressed people. So it became an important point for me. Not so much a question of whether there is communism. Actually, the communist fighters became part of the struggle so that together, we would work very much uh, 
united with the peasants, and as the bullets of the enemy whizzed by, we fought with the peasant workers and the indigenous people. So for us, for me, even as a Catholic priest before, who became politicalized in the struggle of the peasants and workers, the question of communism was not big and important. The important thing was we, together with the peasants and the workers and the indigenous people, we fought for their rights, for justice, and for peace. So I would say that the positive view of my, in my case, of the communism and the communist fighters who fought and some died together with our peasant and workers and Christian fighters. We are united with all those who fight for and unite with the oppressed people. So I would say that uh, whether former priests who get involved, there are many who in the Christians for National Liberation have become close and united with the communist fighters in a kind of revolutionary ecumenism. Those who unite with the exploited and oppressed, unite and fight with them. So that is something that is important also for the Christians in the Catholic country of the Philippines. Galing, thank you very much, uh, Louis. Revolutionary ecumenism, wow. Um, Perhaps you can, uh, there's a question, another question for you, uh, Louis. Maybe you can yeah. just take a sip of water. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, the question is as follows. Uh, congratulations uh, for realizing this historical book series. Uh, dear Louis, what do you see as the most important internationalist alliances of the CPP and the National Democratic Movement of the Philippines today? This is shared, this is question, the question is from uh, Jonas Stahl. Very important in the international alliance is the fight for justice, the fight for against exploitation, oppression that is being developed among revolutionary parties. So Joma, Kajoma has mentioned some of those that are very important. And uh, we consider it of great honor to be uh, together with the Communist Party of India that has fought for a long time and has shown uh, its uh, solidarity with the oppressed people in India and solidarity with other revolutionary forces throughout the world. So Joma has mentioned other progressive forces that are working for the people. So it's important that these revolutionary forces, their allies and the people's movement in these different countries will develop the unity and strength together so that they can move forward in defending the various people from these different countries. So we think that the Philippine movement together with other revolutionary movements are playing an important role. And the Philippines together with India and the other revolutionary forces will be growing in strength as the struggle against the exploitation and oppression continues and they will develop their solidarity in the process. Thank you. Um, maybe we can just continue with that discussion, uh, 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 Louis. Um, so you pointed out to the uh, solidarity and alliances with uh, peoples and organizations. Um, and specifically, the question was, um, can you, I think, perhaps name some important internationalist alliances uh, uh, where the NDFP is uh, or, or the CPP, uh, to your knowledge, is uh, part of at the moment? Well, one very important alliance of people working together is the International Alliance of the 
working and fighting people in the ILPS, which uh, shows that the strength of the, those uh, movements in the different countries, the strength of the different uh, organizations in different countries uh, is growing. So this important alliance of the ILPS, International League of People's Struggle, Struggle is in so many countries. I think it's more than uh, 200 countries and so many organizations and movements. So this is one important alliance. At the same time, there are very strong organizations developed among the migrant workers, among the indigenous people in the different countries. So their cooperation is growing. You can say that the <coughs> CPP, NPA, and DF are at the forefront of these different alliances. And we are confident that there is a stronger and growing desire and commitment of the different forces and countries to go into uh, active relations. So there is support for these alliances and this uh, part of the growing alliances is the growing strength because the exploitation and oppression of US imperialism, including also Soviet imperialism, and lately also that of China is uh, growing and therefore the support of these alliances and their coming together is becoming more and more important. So it is something to see how these alliances are developing their solidarity, coordination, and strength. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Louis, uh, I suggest you take another uh, sip of water, perhaps. <laughs> and um, in the chat, there's a follow-up question uh, by Jonas Stahl. Perhaps you can read that. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to tell again what the uh, rules are for this uh, Q&A. So due to technical uh, difficulties, uh, Professor Shisen cannot join us uh, and uh, Irina is not live with us today. You can post your questions uh, via the chat, uh, so not verbally. And um, there's a whole team, you don't see them, but there's a whole team uh, filtering uh, the questions and, uh, um, and I, we think that some questions are best left addressed by uh, uh, Professor Sison himself. Um, okay, so uh, back to you, uh, uh, Louis. Mm. So uh, there's a follow-up question. I hope you were able to uh, uh, read it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell it now. Yes. So um, con concerning internationalist alliances, what do you see? as the key lessons from the book series for progressive forces acting within imperialist countries. How to interpret the lessons from the book to their specific conditions of struggle? Well, I think uh, Professor Sison has brought out the great importance of progressive forces throughout the world to develop their unity and strength and solidarity. Now you have the International League of People's Struggle covering so many countries and so many organizations and they're still growing in strength. There are still other alliances because progressive forces who are gaining strength and feel the need for solidarity and coming together this co continue to develop. So there are solidarity movements coming up from the grassroots. So you have organized people like uh, migrant workers in different areas. You have ma mass movements of women and also of uh, other indigenous. indigenous peoples also growing. So this type of developments are very important and to develop the solidarity. They are now growing in their solidarity and develop their, developing their strength. So that is 
because also because of the exploitation oppression that is increasing from US imperialism, from Soviet revisionism, as well as coming from the Chinese uh, imperialism now moving. So we see that the oppressed people in the different organizations are developing their strength. We should encourage and bring out more inspiration and solidarity with them. Thank you. So bring out more inspiration and more courage and stand in solidarity with them. Thank you very much for those messages. Okay. Um, so again, uh, the due to technical difficulties, uh, Professor Season could not uh, join us live today, as well as uh, Irina. Um, the questions which were in the chat and also sent before via email uh, will be answered, though. Um, we'll be closing this uh, question and answer. Thank you very much, uh, Louis, for your answers. Um, uh, and thank you very much for the people for uh, posing uh, a question and making this uh, a truly uh, live event. So remember the videos about what communism means to people. We still have one video for you. Here it is. When I think of the word communism, I think not only of the dismantling of the oppressive and exploitative conditions today, but also of the ways it takes shape in meaningful and collectivized care. When I think of communism, I think of the many marginalized and neglected people today who, under a classless society, would be cherished and given the care that they rightfully deserve. A communist is someone who's one with the people, and a communist knows that it's only through the collective will of the people, not merely of individuals, that victories will be won. These principles are embodied by the Filipino revolutionaries. The People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines is one of the most advanced socialist struggles in the world. I have a firm belief and conviction that it will win, whether this victory will come in my lifetime or beyond. What do I think of when I hear the word communist? What do I think of when I think the word communist? What do I think about when I think of a communist? What comes to mind when I think of communism is optimism because another world is being built. I think about people who are always learning and striving to improve their practice. And I also think about accessibility, people who want to help you understand what communism is and integrate it into your life. And I also think about a movement that's inclusive to everybody. I think of someone who has a love for the people, a love that is immense, it's selfless and ready. It's a love that is prepared to do what it needs to do to get ourselves there and to get the people there because it is of the interest of the people to fight for communism. I think human rights, I think equality, and I think of a better world. That's it. Uh, freedom, red fighter, worker, imperialism, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, nice. Isn't that very interesting? With those statements, there's genuine reason to be hopeful of the future. To paraphrase the old adage, the world is yours as well as ours, but in the final analysis is the youth's. But to be theirs, they must own it, own the responsibility, own the struggle. And then, okay, everybody. Um, we're coming to a uh, closing. It's been a very engaging afternoon and we have so much to ponder on. Uh, we would like to thank our reviewers, Irina Malenko and Louis Halandoni. <clears throat> We'd also like to thank Professor Jose Marie Season, even though he couldn't be live with us today. And of course, our cultural artist, Marikit, for her rendition of Angabay. And thank you to the technical teams. And of course, to you, the participants from the different global regions. Thank you. Please do not forget to buy copies of the books. They are available at the following outlets. 
or online shops and bookstores. And we will be showing these to you now. And perhaps I can click my magic finger and you can see it pop up. So the outlets, online shops uh, and bookstores are not popping up. But you got our contact, uh, uh, you got our contact address. So, uh, and perhaps there are also progressive people um, who are in contact with the national democratic movement within your neighborhood. So please ask them to, uh, uh, to inform you where you can get uh, the books. So in the meantime, to close it off, oh, you didn't think we'd be closing off so early? No, we started late and you'd think we'd end up late. No, we're not always late. The world exploiters and oppressors, the monopoly capitalists, the bourgeoisie, the landlord compradors have all the weapons at their disposition, but they do not have the most important and most powerful weapon the exploited and oppressed peoples of the world who, when armed with the correct ideological and political principles, become an invincible and undefeatable foe. And with a genuine communist party leading the people's movement to galvanize the world's people, it will be victorious. It will build a new world and society will be transformed. We have a final video for you and then we'll be ending the live stream it is a music video called Mo'ug Nabu'o or Solid Fortress <laughs> Para ang kalat-kalat na pulo
Nice. Moog na buo. The video clip is also available on YouTube. Go to Moog na buo V2. You can also see the lyrics there. Um, also, if you just type Moog na buo and I'm sorry, I forgot to turn my video on. So that is Moog na buo or Solid Fortress. It's also available on uh, YouTube. So if you just type in there, you can see it with, you go to V2. Uh, and also if you type in Moog na buo lyrics, you can see the, uh, the translation of uh, the song. Um, I was just informed that there's a uh, Facebook page. It's titled JMS Books and Writings. There you can also find information on how to uh, purchase the books. And please don't forget to buy. It is, as you've heard, very informative and very inspiring. Okay, that's it, everyone. Well before time. Sorry for the technical difficulties uh, and we couldn't have uh, Professor Shison live with us today. Um, ha, there's some uh, messages in the chat. Okay, we're closing it off for now. We hope to see you again at the, the next book, book launching, hopefully with uh, lesser technical difficulties. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.